Yeah, man. Knock only sessions. The Contra. Allahuwa. Shabbat Shalawa. And we did it again. <laughs> Let go. All praise to Wa for all the Baruch that we are receiving as a Shabbat Tah. Managa's making Naga moves. I see you. you. More importantly, you see you. You know, you see what you're doing. You see that you're popping off. And ain't nothing no one else got to say about it. Mean nothing, man. Because you see clearly. You see yourself clearly. What can anybody say? Man? What can anybody say when we when the Naga sees ourselves clearly. All that hijack and talk, all that wing way, but they don't understand the flow. They're not in this flow. They're not in this redemption season. They still getting hit over the head. And we popping off, man. For joy world, my Naga. A <laughs> hop to the 500 cold, keep it Naga. All across the earth, playing, making it happen. We hit our goal to build our fence. Now we got boots to the ground. And my noggin, we popping on. The Wada Shabbat The water for your Ahab and your contributions and all of our dragon sponsors at 432 with the drop. Radio Ahab to you. Shabbat Shalom. Heat the squad. Ahab to you. We did it again. Another checkpoint is another checkpoint. To remember that you're not going dizzy. You don't have to spin and not have a focal point. Shabbat is our focal point. And with that, you get clarity, 
for further focal points, my love. Building a fence for our tribe. Building a fence for our tribe is a focal point. I don't know what you're doing, <laughs> but we letting you in. We're giving you a little slit, a little slit to observe, you know, like a double slit. You know, uh, we're allowing you to observe us. To collapse the wave pattern on what? Paradise, because we keep the cold. And it's only one way to go all the way up, you know what I mean? So we continue to spiral up and we allow you to witness what we're doing in terms of driving up and building a fence, you know, to to a particular degree, you know? But we got 360 dragonflies. You know what I mean? So, you know, we want you to be inspired by Nagi and we want you to see this done so that you can actually say that you've seen a tribe. Keep the cold. Tribe up from across the plain and build them a fence. Blue, purple, red, white, linen, gold, three. Raise money from the 500 cold keepers to, you know, handle the material costs and all the costs involved and you know, securing, man, the right personnel, man, the right, the right flow, you know what I'm saying? Having the right nagas there, making sure that we can, you know, really pop off the right way to make sure this fence is immaculate. All this takes work, all this takes resources to get nagas there, you know what I'm saying? And to make sure everybody's safe and secure and pop off, you know? So what you're doing has allowed us to do that. And to all my nagas in particular, our the 500 code keeping families that support us and that we depend on. True and maximum Ahab and Dawa Da to you. We just popping off. The book of Yashar, the book of Hawasha, what they call Jasher. Book of Joshua, let's get it, man. Chapter 13. Let's talk about Abraham. Let's talk about Tarak. Let's go. Wow. And Terah took his son Avram and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and Sarah, his daughter-in-law, the woman of his son Avram, and all the souls of his household, and went with them from Ur, Kastin, to go to the land of Canaan. When they came as far as the land of Haran, they remained there, for it was exceedingly good land for pasture, and of sufficient extent for those who accompanied them. And the people of the land of Haran saw that Aram was good and upright with Hawa and men, and that Hawa was with them. Managa, that's how they gonna, you know, feel about us. You know what I'm saying? As as we sign up, they're gonna know Hawa is with us. They're gonna know the true heart bone, man. You know, that goes into each and every drop that we call Drop Nation. They're gonna feel you. They're gonna say, man, we know they are protected. We know that the creator is rocking with the tribe of Nagas and Nagafi. It's going to be an obvious thing, man. You know what I mean? What are they good? What are they, what are they evil? Everyone will feel this, man. Everyone will feel Hawa's presence on you. And the people of the land of Haran saw that Abram was good and upright with Hawa. So first they saw 
Abraham, right? Abram was good and upright with Hawah. The first thing they notice about Abram is that he's a code keeper. Shout out to my 500 code keeping families. Because when we have 500 families that are keeping the code of Hawaii KTC, spiraling nine all the way up, we are unstoppable. 500 families of code keepers, man. See, they can't just flood. They can't just flood us out no more. You know, <laughs> the gig is up. You know, now we on high ground. Now we on high ground. You know what it looked like, man? I was talking to Chef Candy, love to the queen. Love to the, you know, Ama Aqua, Chef King. And, uh, you know, it appears, man, that, you know, they, they knew exactly what they were doing when they pushed us, you know, from land to land, pushed us out of our original homelands and kind of made us regroup in these certain areas, you know, that we can, you know, feel like we were safely building in, but they were playing chess, man. Not checkers. They knew we were building in these low, floodable, sinkable, drownable areas. They knew they were setting us up, watching us build, just to one day damn the damn place up and flood us out for good, right? Because now we forgot. We're going to be right back on them damn dams, man. <laughs> Are we looking? We searching. Why? Wow. Yeah, they knew exactly what they were doing when they pushed us into them low, you know, uh, elevation, you know what I'm saying? Almost like all that, all that bowl-like territory, like, you know, the whole, you know, Katrina, Hurricane Katrina, you know, New Orleans, you know, sitting in the bowl, right? Like a crater almost, right? <laughs> all these floodable areas, man. Nah, man, we, we build it high now, man. And the first thing they notice about that frequency of high on Abraham, they knew he was a code keeper. So these 500 code keeping families, see, we, we spread out now. We're not just all condensed in one area. These families are building other families of code keepers. Then we're gonna look at 5,000 code keeping families, man. Families, man. Not just one Naga, because this Naga got his family KTC. And they put their resources together, man, imagine. <laughs> right now we're talking about 500 cold keepers, what $20 each would do, you know what I'm saying? $20 turned into 10,000. Now we building a fence and we got many repeat contributors, a hop to you, you know, cause not everybody's in that position every time, but imagine a whole family that's KTC putting their resources together. <laughs> it's nothing to come up with you know, a hundred dollars for the family and turn that into what? Times times five hundred fifty thousand dollars. So you're telling me as five hundred code keeping families, we got fifty thousand dollars whenever we are building whatever project we're working on, whose ever land we're working on. We're working on Joy World, we're working on Copper Land, <laughs> Tex building the land, we're working with the Comb say. We're coming together with $100 for each. 500 cold keeping families. Do you see the vision? It's not about building up one individual. It's about having a nation to build each other up so that we can say, who are we going to build up this month? Let's put our $100, you know what I'm saying, to Aqua Miss Dina Copper Color Awakening. Now she has $50,000 to build. Do you see that you're unstoppable and all it took was $100 for your family to build Miss D up? Now who we gonna, you know what I'm saying, build up next? Now they got a head start, now they going, then we can go check back in with Miss D and drop another 50 racks on her. Another 50 bands, my naga, cause you just put up 100 as a family. <laughs> as a family, <laughs> 100. You just turn 100 into 50,000. You turn 20 into 10,000. You see the vision, the unity, but the unity don't come blindly as black people unify no matter what. <laughs> nah, the unity came in cold. Hawa, the breath of security was revealed to us in cold. That's why we so high. 
<laughs> but we just talking you, dog. Yeah, they, they felt that high vibration on Abraham first. And then what, my naga? We're in the book of Hawasha, chapter 13. Verse 2, let's get it from here. And the people of the land of Haran saw that Abram was good and upright with Hawa and men. <laughs> so he was KTC. He walked with that respect. Men respected him because of his relationship with Hawa first. KTC. And they saw that Hawa was with him. <laughs> Why? Because he was upright with Hawa. So because he's upright with Hawa, Hawa is now with him. Ka. So what does it mean for Hawa to be with you? What did it mean for Hawa to be with Dawi? Yeah, dragons are popping off. Yes, dragons are popping off, right? <laughs> Moshe, dragons, right? Hey, build you a copper dragon. Whoever it bites will get life, not death. Life to whoever this fire was biting from this copper dragon that Moses is building in Numbers chapter 21. Oh, it's a snake on a pole. He, he conjured a copper dragon. My what, whatever the fire bit, the biting is also stinging. These are all translations. Biting, stinging, the flame or the fire stung whoever got life in Numbers 21. So don't tell me about no bad dragon in Revelation when we have a life-given dragon in Numbers 21. Now the people in their folly, after getting life, instead of turning to Hawa, they looked at the dragon and said, whoa, this dragon gave me life. And you had some that went off and started worshiping it, right? That's what our people do. That's why Hawa said, nah, dragons fall back. Imagine if our dragons was popping off too early. How many Nagas, even, even in their subconscious, you know, would start really worshiping that dragon and then, you know, praying to this dragon and conjuring this dragon, you know what I'm saying? And, and imagine all the things the dragon would be teaching, you know what I'm saying? And all this, all this, man, <laughs> it would be too much. If you ain't KTC, you out of order. Hawaii ain't gonna let this happen again, man. Hawaii give you a gift, you don't start worshiping the gift, you know what I mean? Con, con. So everything in, 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 in the righteous time, you know, because there ain't no time. It's only the wave, man. Is to knock only such. Abraham is KTC and Hawa is with him. And some of the people of the land of Haran came and joined Abraham and he taught them the instruction of Hawa and his ways. He taught them to what? Keep the code. We're talking about 500 code keeping families turning into 5,000 because each one is teaching one. Con, con. Hit the easy button. Hit the easy button. When you see what the unity of the code keepers is like, we start with this fence and then what? Then we're like, yo, we did it. We did 10 racks, we did that. 100 racks, we do this. Now we popping off shelters all over the place. Safe havens, safe cities. Wait till we start popping off. Man, phew. Ooh, that tribe up foundation, man. The TUF tough cities. Tribe up foundation. Love the brother nature. We popping off, man. We'll be able to, you know, uh, I'm not, you know, <laughs> hey, fall back. It's a Shabbat. <laughs> About to pop off, man. What the unity of the tribe be like, because you always existed, but now you see each other. Now you see it clearly, now you see each other, now you trust each other, now you rock it. Because ain't no hijack surviving in this frequency, man. It is a frequency war, and we already won. Con up, natural by law. So then Abraham, uh, Abraham, he taught them the instruction of Hawa and his ways. 
And these men remain with Abraham, Abraham, in his house, and they adhered to him. And Abraham remained in the land three years. And at the expiration of the three years, Hawa appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am Hawa who brought you forth from Ur, Kasdim, and delivered you from the hands of all your enemies. And now, therefore, if you will hearken to my voice and guard my commandments, hit the easy button. It's a deal you're making. It's a covenant, huh? Two cross sticks. It's that towel. You got to do your part. Hit the easy button. It's that simple. Keep the code simple. Don't kill, don't steal, don't covet, don't bear false witness, you know? No power before power. Keep our Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Just rest, just remember, just remember, man. Lawa. So I am Hawa who brought you forth from Ur, Kasdim, and delivered you from the hands of all your enemies. That's what comes when Hawa is with you, right? All your enemies, no matter how big and tough they seem today. Imagine how big and tough they seem. Egypt and all this back then, right? Verse 4. And now, therefore, if you will listen to my voice and guard my commandments, my statutes, and my Torah. Then will I cause your enemies to fall before you. And I will multiply your seed like the stars of heaven. And I will send my Baruch upon all your works of your hands, my knocking. We're talking about working with our hands. We're talking about building a fence. But whatever we build, Hawa, because we are hearkening, listening, and keeping the code. No power before power. Real simple. No hijacks allowed. Hawa is going to Baruch the work of our hands, man. We're getting blessed. Right? We're getting Baruch every day. But you got to believe in this new you this 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 upgraded you this is the you that you've been waiting for believe in yourself walk in your shoes and let hawa baruch you hawa will not fail you man because you already you already won man so it's time to cash up right it's time to cash it in cash them tickets in you've been playing at <laughs> dave and busters this whole time right you've been winning all these games you already won now you want a prize you already won. You already got the prize. You already got the tickets. You already won the game. Whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You've been doing this, my nigga. They've been playing it how they want it, man. But you already won. The minute you got back in code, and that's how it go. The hijacking jam you up in all these ways, right? Your work, money, health, all this stuff. But when you get back in code with your body, when you get back in code, you know, with your frequency, your energy, your vibration. Exodus 20 got us in code. Man. At this point, you already, you already won. You just got to get there now. You just got to keep going. No matter how grim it looks, keep going. No matter if it's unbelievable, keep going. <laughs> no matter how much it hurts. Keep going. We all been hurt before. We all been, you know, had that empty feeling, that pain, that hopelessness, man. You know? We've been there. I've been there. KTC, you know how we do. Put our power first. We never lose. To knock on these sessions. I delivered you from the hands of all your enemies. 
Now, therefore, if you will hearken to my voice and guard my Torah, guard my code, keep the code. I will cause your enemies to fall before you. I don't care how big they are. I don't care how much technology they got. I don't care if they're watching us. And I will multiply your seed like the stars of the heaven and I will send my Baruch upon all your works. The works of your hands. And you shall lack nothing. You're going to have it all, my Naga. Because you are keeping the code. Arise now and take your women and all belonging to you and go to the land of Canaan and remain there and I will be there unto you for a breath of security Hawa oh, wow. and I will Baruch you and Avram rose and took his woman and all belonging to him and he went to the land of Canaan as Hawa had told him. And the Canaan, man, you know, back to the Hanans, back to the Anion, and the way they spell it in this, I'm reading out the Etzephor. They spell it K E N A apostrophe A N, like they, they stress the on, on like they stress the, the last on. So they have Canaan. Like Anna, Annie, uh, you know, you know, back to the Kana, you know, choose your Canaan, choose your Kana, because Hanan or Kanan is also the son of Prester John, you know, brother of the Exilarch David as well, right? And Solomon. But we're just talking about, you know, uh, David Sausley <laughs> for the wave surfers. Let's go. Kanan, Anian, either way. <laughs> he said, I will be there unto you for a power, a breath of security. They say, an Elohim, you know. We're talking about a strong power, a breath of security. And I will Baruch you. Avram rose, he took his woman, he went to Canaan as Hawad told him. And Avram was 50 years old. When he went from Haran, and Avram came to the land of Canaan and dwelt in the midst of the city, and he there pitched his tent among the children of Canaan, inhabitants of the land. And Hawa appeared to Avram, and when he came to the land of Canaan, said to him, This is the land which I give unto you and your seed after you forever. So Hawaz not giving away someone else's land. Hawaz taking back what he has already predained, predestined as an inheritance for the children of Israel. For the tribes. The tribes of Judah, the tribes of Ephraim. All of us, right? So we have a land of our very own, and that's what Nagaville is all about, is reestablishing, because everyone likes to amalgamate into our nice things, you know. They laugh at us and scorn us when we don't have nothing, and then when we say it's all ours, they say, wait, us too, me too, man. Look at my genealogies. <laughs> it, it links me back here somehow. How convenient. Managa, this is a kingdom. This is a priesthood. There's only one way in. There's <laughs> only one way out. You got to be in code, and you got to be all the way up with the Preston. You don't just get to pick and choose where you live. Uh, this is the real world. Paperwork ain't going to do it. You have to be allowed to rock. <laughs> it's, a, you know, it's a privilege if you're in the land of the Preston. Because this land was given to us by our heritage and inheritance from Hawaii. 
not you. You don't have this. This is not, you know, your power didn't give this to you unless you're just talking about stealing it, you know. And all y'all been talking about stealing it, so here we are, right? Those who rightfully has the land and those who want to do everything other than the right thing to take the land from those who rightfully have the land. It's called the land of Canaan <laughs> in their translations because so many of these Canaanites were on this land doing this whole takeover situation, which rings, you know, very familiar with the Poseidon story. And a lot of those that connect the Poseidon character with the Canaan character, they're being out of order. They're in the land they're not supposed to be in, even in the Poseidon story. You got his brothers, you got his pops telling him to leave the land. He still wanted to pop off on this land, which happens to be America or India Superior. Or Asia, you know, however you want to look at it. <laughs> so he's in this land of milk and honey, Poseidon, he don't want to leave. You know, it becomes, you know, you look at their map, it's Poseidon's land. You look at the Moorish map, it's all about uh, the Ham and Canaan. Ham and Canaan. For Ham and Canaan. Father, son, hand, land of Canaan, land of hand, no shim, right? So it's all perspective. But there's only one true creator, one true power, one true Hawa, and therefore there's only one, you know, uh, true remnant that Hawa is with. Hawa is not confused and confused, you know, confusing. Hawa has been rocking with a tribe the whole time. This big, thick sephir with the whole. Torah, the whole Tanakh, all the whole entire story, even the revelations in the New Test they put at the very end of this thing, even that ends with these gates, these 12 gates where the tribes are going into 12 gates in Revelation. So don't tell me that it ain't tribal all the way to the very end, no matter which end you are going to uh, pick and chew. You got the New Test end, it ends with tribes, right? They got their 144,000 and 12 thousand each tribe and they're going through gates that has their tribal name on it. Benjamin, Gad, Asher, Neptali. They all have tribes, Managa, Zebulon. Even in Revelations it's tribal, but the Christians don't care. They don't care about tribes. They don't care about Israel, right? They don't care about the truth. Hasharah. <laughs> Hasharah, yo, Seb, let's go. They don't care about that, right? Nah, it's just about spiritual Israel, spiritual Christian, and their spiritual rapture. <laughs> None of them actually kept any true spirit of the Torah, Torah of the code, of Mama, the Framer, the Shaper, no Ruach from Ama Abba, just their Christian spirit. Nah, we're back, man. And we don't let None of this hijack slide. Right now, that energy that Abraham's rocking with, the energy that Dawid and Ezekiel, <laughs> that Deborah, Queen Deborah, <laughs> Esther's rocking with, man, that's what's on our aquas and ox right now. This is a redemption season that very few are going to be able to feel until it's really too late to even catch the wave, man. They're just going to have to get, you know. <laughs> They're going to have to just, you know what I'm saying, get get what it is. Straight static, straight Jacob's trouble. And all praise of why we're able to be activated. All praise of why we can activate. Nah, man. This tribe has a land of the very own. These tribes have Nagaville of their very own. Verse five, arise, take your queen, take your woman, go to the land of Canaan. Abraham rose and took his queen, his woman, and all that belonged to him, went to the land of Canaan after 50 and Abraham was 50 years old when he went away from Haran 
And Abram, Abraham came to the land of Canaan and dwelt in the midst of the city. And he there pitched his tent among the children of Canaan, inhabitants of the land. And Hawa appeared to Abraham when he came to the land of Canaan and said to him, This is the land which I give unto you and to your seeds like the stars and to your seeds after you forever and I will make your seeds like the stars of heaven and I will give unto your seed for an inheritance all the lands which you see And Abraham built an altar in the place where Hawa had spoken to him and Abram there called upon the name of Hawa. At that time, at the end of three years of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, in that year Noah died, which was the 58th year after the life of Abram. And all the days that Noah lived were 950 years, and he died, and Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan. He his woman and all his belonging, all belonging to him, and all those that accompanied him, together with those that joined him from the people of the land. But Nakur, Nakor, Abram's brother, and Tarak, his father, and Lot, the son of Haran, and all belonging to them dwelt in Haran. In the fifth year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, the people of Sidam, and Amor, or you know, that <laughs> Sidon, or Sidon and Gomorrah, Sidon and Gomorrah, and all the cities of the plain revolted from the power of Kadorla Omer, king of Eli, Elam. And all the kings of the cities of the plains had served Kadora La Amor for 12 years, and they spell it K E D O R L A apostrophe O M E. Oh, so you gotta hear that Omir or Amor. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I mean, they can't hide no more. They can't hide no more. Amor. Let's go. So Kadorla Amor, they served for 12 years and given him a yearly tax. But in those days, in the 13th year, they rebelled against him. In the 10th year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, there was war between Nimrod king of Shinar, and Kadorla Amor, king of Elaim, Elam, E-Y-L-A-M, Elam. And Nimrod came to fight with Kadorla Amor and subdue him. For Kadorla Amor was at that time one of the princes of the host of Nimrod. And when all the people at the tower were dispersed and those that remained were also scattered upon the face of the earth, Kadorla Amor went to the land of Elam and reigned over it and rebelled against this Lord. And in those days when Nimrod, Nimrod saw that the cities of the plain had rebelled, he came with pride and anger to war with Kadorla Amor and Nimrod, a and Nimrod assembled all his princes and subjects, about 700,000 men, and went against Kadorla Amor. And Kadorla Amor went out to meet him with 5,000 men, and they prepared for battle. All right. So Nimrod assembled 700,000, and they say Kadorla Amor went out to meet him with 5,000 men. Okay. The Valley of Babal, Babal, which is between Elam and Shinir. And all those kings fought there, and Nimrod and his people were smitten, smitten before the people of Kedorla Amor. And there fell from Nimrod about 600,000. And Mardan, the king's son, fell among them. And Nimrod fled and returned in shame and disgrace to his land, and he was under subjection to Kedorla Amor for a long time. So there must have been divine intervention for 5,000 men to be victorious with, against 700,000. They did. They said they slayed over 600,000. Verse 16. 
We're in the book of Jasher, chapter 13. And Nimrod fled and returned in shame and disgrace to his land, and he was under subjection to Kedorla Amor for a long time. And Kedorla Amor returned to his land and sent princes of his host to the kings that dwelt around him to Er, to Ariok, king of el -Akar, and to Tidal, king of nations, and made a covenant with them, and they were all obedient to his command. And it was in the fifteenth year of Abraham's dwelling in the land of Canaan, when in which is the seventeenth or seventieth year of the life of Abraham, and Hawa appeared to Abraham in that year and said to him, I am Hawa who brought you out from Ur Kazdim to give you this land for an inheritance. And therefore walk before me and be perfect and guard my commands. For to you and to your seed, I will give this land for an inheritance from the river Mizraim unto the great river Parah. And you shall come to your fathers in peace and in good age. And the fourth generation shall return here in this land and shall inherit it forever. Oh. So what would they be calling the fourth generation that will return here? to this land and shall inherit it forever my not let's get it for the dismount and Abram Abram built an altar and he called upon the name Hawa who appeared to him and he brought up sacrifices upon the altar to Hawa at that time Abraham returned and went to Haran to see his father and mother and his father's household and Abram and his woman and all belonging to him returned to Haran and Abram dwelt in Haran five years and many of the people of, Har of Haran about 72 men followed Abram and Abram taught them the instructions of Hawa and his ways and he taught them to know Hawa in those days all praise Hawa by teaching Anaga the code and really like you know putting it in a way that even a, a baby, even a baby can understand, you're now teaching them to know the creator, you know. Because it's a frequency. And you tapping into that frequency, you're now seeing clearly. Now you are, now you're knowing Hawa because you're in cold with Hawa. <laughs> you can't claim to know Hawa and be out of cold. You know, love to my bro, Five Eyes Mom, man, it's like having... You know, one of them floppy disks that needs to be configured in your laptop or, you know, one of them USBs. You got to configure it. You got to code it up, right, to even have a communication, to upload, download, all that. You got to be in code with Hawaii to be able to upload, download, all that. You know, you download this this flow, this energy, this frequency. You're downloading the knowledge, the understanding, our minds, connecting things. You're constantly downloading information, vibration. What are you uploading? Anaka, you uploading you. You uploading your experiences. Every experience is unique. You know, it adds to the flow of Hawaii. It adds to, you know what I'm saying, the, the wholeness of it. Like you're, you're uploading, you know what I'm saying, your experience. You know, no angel that has not experienced life, you know, as you have, can really, you know, truly understand what it's like unless they have that experience you know that's why you're very special based on your experiences it's tuned you up a whole special type of way and you've gone through so much just specifically for the tuna you know this is a very specific tune-up process and that's all we've been doing man is is going through all these specific experiences you know what i'm saying to tune up in this frequency that we're in right now so a lot why you know for all these things, you know what I'm saying, overcoming. Because it's added to the upload, which is giving you more download. <laughs> you're uploading to the cloud, right? <laughs> you know, your your energy, your ruach is uploading based on experience back to the frame and the shape of man. You know what I mean? So now you're one drop again, one flow. It is, it's, it's all sauce, man. <laughs> Love to my bro, man, Yosef with the mem sauce, man. Creator of Mem Sauce, man. We popping off, man. You know what I mean? And you know, hey, out to him, the bro nine, man. Just getting knockers, you know. That copper, that zinc flow, man. That, that Mem Sauce. And look out for us, man. Look out for Mem Sauce, man. <laughs>
We coming in hot, man. We dropping in hot, man. Lahua for the dismount. And many of the people, verse 21, of Haran, about 72 men, followed Abram. And Abram taught them the instruction of Hawa and his ways. And he taught them to know Hawa. In those days, Hawa appeared to Abram and Haran. And he said to him, Behold, I spoke unto you these 20 years back, saying, Go forth from your land, from your birthplace, and from your father's house, to the land which I have shown you, to give it to you, to your children. For there in that land will I Baruch you and make you a great nation and make your name great. What's in the name? What's in the title that you get through this great name you have, right? We are the Ramani. Let's get it. I will make your name great and in and in you shall the families of the earth be Baruch. Now therefore arise, go forth from this place, you, your woman, and all belonging to you, and everyone born in your house, and all the souls you have made in Haran. The souls that have been, you know, now upgraded to being in code, and now they're in KTC. Now they tribe it up. So he's like, yeah, bring all the all the tribe, because they're in code. And bring them out with you from here and rise to return to the land of Canaan. And Abram arose and took his woman Sarah and all belonging to him and all that were born to him in his house and the souls which they had made in Haran. And they came out to go to the land of Canaan. And let's not uh, act like we ain't read <laughs> that uh, Sephir uh, Yazera, you know, love to KB for picking that up. And, Breaking down how Abraham had the set for Yazir. You know, he was able to create people, you know, through the frequency, you know, using the Hebrew and the magic that goes with it, that the high level magi, you know, they were creating, you know, like servants, you know what I'm saying? Now you got to question what Abraham was creating that was in order, you know what I'm saying, with their secrets and their flow, you know what I'm saying, as to what, you know, the other, you know, tribes started doing, you know, kind of reflecting off of this creation of people back to the general muck muck and all that. He went through this whole process, right, to create a certain type of people. So we were creating people, no matter if you look at it on this side or that side. And this is one of the scripts that possibly alludes to that when he says, <laughs> Verse 24, now therefore arise, go forth from this place, you, your woman, all belonging to you, right? So that's that would include, you know, your servants and people in your house and different things. Abraham's very special, right? He has a big house now. <laughs> uh, and then it says everyone born in your house, okay? So that's people, you know, family. And then he says, all the souls you have made. So how, how are the souls made, not including those that are born in the house, right? Either we're talking about those people that Abraham was teaching. And, you know, he, he made their souls. I don't you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or we're talking about actual golem, you know, or people that were created through this magic, this magi flow. That Abraham was rocking in cold with this Sefer Ha or Sefer Yet Zero. I think we still got a copy of it. I think we have a couple of different copies of it uh, in the Drop Library. All this is getting redone and make it even more convenient for you. But the hey, the the drop, the knowledge, all that man is still in there, man. So you know, just go get it, go jump in and, and just enjoy it. And we'll be adding to it and getting back on that as well. But you know, think about it. Was Abraham creating people? <laughs> And that's what all the souls you have made is, or are they just saying in the Christianized way, like, oh, you know, I made these souls, I converted them, that type of thing. You know, just, I read it again, and, and I'm going to let you just take it from there. <laughs> Verse 24, Jasher 13, for the dismind. Now 
Now therefore arise, go forth from this place, you, your woman, and all belonging to you, also everyone born in your house, and all the souls you have made in Haran, and bring them out with you from here, and rise to return to the land of Canaan. And Abram arose and took his woman Sarah, and all belonging to him, and all that were born to him in his house, and the souls which they had made in Haran. And they came out to go to the land of Canaan. And Abram went and returned to the land of Canaan according to the word of Hawah. And Lot, the son of his brother Haran, went with him. And Abram was seventy-five years old when he went forth from Haran to return to the land of Canaan. So our Moabite brothers and sisters, you know what I'm saying? This is this is our attachment, right? This is our how close we are. Because you know, Abraham, Abraham is just kicking off. Now, his bro Haran, you know, he, his his son Lot, you know, wants to kick it with old Uncle Abraham, right? <laughs> and Lot, the son of his brother Haran, went with him. So Abraham didn't have to let Lot come kicking. Let's just back it up. You know? He didn't have to let Lot come kicking. Story could have been a lot different, but Abraham. Took him under his wing, man. Say, man, let's go. Man, I got you. I'll protect you. He had to look out for him, you know what I mean? A few different times. And out of Lot comes this Ammon and Moab situation, right? And now we're talking Moab and Ammon all day, right? So, <laughs> and we know how that story go. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I've never heard this be denied. But that's the... That's the flow, you know what I'm saying, that Israel's always had, you know, with Moab or Ramah and the whole lot situation, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's always been a type of big bro type of energy, you know, to where, look, you know, you popped off in the midst of, you know, following Abraham and, you know, you know, trying to get to these greener pastures here, man. But that don't mean that you was, you know, rocking with this particular Baruch, you know, this particular Baruch that Abraham is flowing his seed doesn't necessarily include Lot in them. <laughs> when Hawaz Baruch and giving that Baruch to Abraham's seed, that's not necessarily including Lot. But Lot is still protected, you know, under the house, right? And that's why he wanted to kick it so close to Abraham the whole time. That's why Moab has always been so close to Utah the whole time. You know, and that's why Hawaz said, hey, if you don't clear out this land, they will be a thorn in your side bone because they're going to want what you got. They never stop wanting what you got. Treaties of pieces of friendship, man. It's a more and more war, man. Let's get it. Verse 27, And he came to the land of Canaan according to the word of Hawah to Abraham, and he pitched his tent, and he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, and with him was his was Lot, his brother's son, and all belonging to him, right? So you got a whole nother gang gang, you know what I mean? That's, you know, tribing up <laughs> with the frequency, right? Verse 28, and Hawa again appeared to Abram and said, to your seed will I give this land. Huh? You ain't talking a lot, right? <laughs> nah, man, it's not your things, even though, you know, you have a lot. Everyone has a lot under Shem. Everyone got the lot here. But that's not the inheritance. That's not the Baruch. Hawa again appeared to Abram and said, To your seed will I give this land. And he built an altar to Hawa, who appeared to him, which is still to this day in the plains of Mamre. Oh, man. Then next time we'll pick up in the days. In those days, there was in the land of Shinar a wise man who had understanding and all wisdom and of a beautiful appearance, but he was poor and indignant or indigent, indigent. His name was Rikayan, R-I-Q-A-Y-O-N, and he was hard set to support himself. And he resolved to go to Mizraim to Aswiris, the son of Ananaim, king of Mitzah. <laughs> now look how they spell Atzweris. I'm in the I'm in the Sefer now, so they got different translations in, on this on these titles, right? So they spell it O S W I R I S. 
What does that sound like? O S W I R I S. So you got the iris, right? And then you got the os. <laughs> Osiris. Almost sound like a Cyrus. And it says the son of Anami, king of Mitzrayim. So this king of Egypt is called Osiris. Hmm. So this Rikayan, <laughs> Rikayan, R I Q A Y O N, he was hard set to support himself. He, re he, and he resolved to go to Mitzrayim to Osiris, <laughs> the son of Anamim, A N A M I Y M, king of Mitzrayim, to show the king his wisdom, or perhaps he might find grace in his sight to raise him up and give him maintenance and Rikayan did so and when Rikayan came to Mitzrayim he asked the inhabitants of Mitzrayim concerning the king and the inhabitants of Mitzrayim told him the custom of the king of Mitzrayim for it was then the custom of the king of Mitzrayim <laughs> that he went from his royal palace and he was seen abroad only one day in the year and after that the king would return to his palace to remain there and on that day when the king went forth he passed judgment in the land and everyone having a suit came before the king that day to obtain his request and when Rikahan heard the custom in Mitzrayim and that he could not come into the presence of the king he grieved greatly and was very sorrowful and in the evening, Rikahan went out and found a house in ruins, formerly a bakehouse in Misraim. And he abode there all night in bitterness of soul and pitched with hunger, pinched with hunger, and sleep was removed from his eyes. And Rikahan considered within himself what he should do in the town until the king made his appearance and he and how he might maintain himself there. And he rose in the morning and walked about and met in his way those who sold vegetables and various sorts of seed which, with which they supplied the inhabitants. And Rikahan wished to do the same in order to get a maintenance in the city. But he was unacquainted with the custom of the people and he was like a blind man among them. Rikahan's gonna go on to prove some mighty things about his wisdom. <laughs> and I'll, I'll read this, I'm, you know, <laughs> belly flop over to verse 32. And we'll get the whole thing next time. It says, And Rikahan, Pharaoh, cunningly usurped the government of Mitzrayim. And he enacted a tax from all the inhabitants of Misraim. And all the inhabitants of Misraim greatly loved Rikayan, Pharaoh. And they made a decree to call every king that should reign after them and their seed in Misraim, Pharaoh. So they saying that that's his name. That was his name. Rikayan, Pharaoh. <laughs> who's rocking with his wisdom. <laughs> And later to give honor to this Pharaoh Rikayan, they said, we're gonna call every king that should reign over us Pharaoh. Therefore, all the kings that reign in Mitzrayim from that time forward were called Pharaoh unto this day. This is interesting, right? <laughs> Verse 27, it says, And the king answered and said to Rikayan, Your name shall no more be called Rikayan, but Pharaoh shall be your name since you did exact since you did exact a tax from the dead, and he called his name Pharaoh. <laughs> so the word the title Pharaoh involved enacting a tax. Enacting a tax from where? From the dead, my knock. I mean, it gets more interesting than this, right? <laughs> so that bondage and his pharaohs of Egypt all connects 
to enacting this tax on the dead. And that's why we choose life, man. We choose life, my knight. And the king and his subjects loved Rikayan for his wisdom, and they consulted with all the inhabitants of Mizraim to make him perfect under the king. And all the inhabitants of Mizraim and his wise men did so, and it made a, they made a law. It was made a law in Mizraim, and they made Rikayan Pharaoh perfect under Osiris, <laughs> Osiris, Osiris, king of Mizraim. And Rikayan Pharaoh governed over Mizraim daily, administrating justice over the whole city. But Osiris, the king, would judge the people of the land one day in the year when he went out to make his appearance. And then they said, you know, that's how he usurped this Rikayan, uh, usurped the government of Mizraim, and he enacted attacks from all the inhabitants of Mizraim. And it's interesting how they, you know, give us these dead titles, right? And then they tax us today, <laughs> letting you know you're still in Egypt, man. And the same Hawa, the same power that rocked us up out of the last time, it's going to rock with us this time as we pop off by noggin, as we pop off and keep popping off. When you do it, you got to keep doing it. Don't pop off one time. You got to pop off. And you got to keep popping off. You got to keep walking through that door. You fall, get back up. You take a step back. Then take three steps forward, man. And keep going, you know. Because history seems to repeat itself. Which means that you must have an inheritance. And you must pop off once again. And this time we playing for keeps. Because we already won. We popping off. Allah wa. This is our Tanakh only sess. Naga, keep surfing the wave and keep doing exactly what you're doing, man. Being a cold keeper, being hijack free. As soon as you get back in your frequency, you already won. Never doubt yourself, because you already did the hard part. You emptied your cup, you came humble to Hawa. You believe and trust that Hawa will fill your cup up <laughs> with more substance than ever before. And now you see clearly, Managa, congrats to the cons. We did it again. Shabbat Shalom. Allah Hawa. We popping off. Tribe us. <laughs>